Hello, welcome to today's Monday Manna. As always, we pray that we find you in good health and in good spirits. We're going to pray and then we're going to get right into our study of Jeremiah 18 verses 1 through 6. Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your loving kindness. How gracious you are to us. O oh God of heaven and earth, how wonderful your ways are toward the children of men. O oh God of heaven and earth, you are worthy of the glory, the honor, and the praise. It is you, O oh God. It is you and you alone that sustains us. It is you and you alone that delivers us. It is you and you alone that protects us, O oh God. Let all of the glory, the honor, and the praise that is due be unto anyone. Let it be unto you and you alone and not to anyone else. We thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you are about to do. You are growing up the body of Christ. You are growing the church. Amen. That we might grow into the full measure of the stature of Christ. And we thank you for that. Thank you for the examples that you have set forth in the word of God. Whereby as we meditate on them, the Holy Spirit has opportunity to expound on the word of God in us. And then Jesus, who is the Christ, has the opportunity to manifest the power of God through us as we meditate upon the word of God. So thank you for this plan that you have laid out, this wonderful, magnificent plan that you have laid out for our success. We thank you for that in Jesus name. Amen. 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 And amen to God be the glory. We're going to continue our series on God is faithful with the thought in mind. What did God say? Now, last week we started Jeremiah 18 verses one through six, and we began to expound on the fact that although we want to hear what God has said, we need to know what God has said. There are some responsibilities that we as believers have. Amen. There's a part to play. We too have a part to play. Amen. And so once we understand our part to play, then it is easier for God to get a word to us that Jesus may manifest through us. Did you hear me? It is easier for God to get a word to us for Jesus to manifest himself through us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen. So last week we talked about, are you in a place to hear God? Are you in a place to hear God? I'm going to go ahead and read Jeremiah 18 verses 1 through 6. The word which came to Jeremiah, oh, that's the Amplified. Let's go to the King James Version. Everybody's familiar with that. Most people are. Jeremiah 18, 1 through 6. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise, go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord. Behold, as the, clay, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. I was just reminded as I was reading these scriptures um, for the last, I'd say, well, pretty much, well, I want to say for the last year or so, um, you know, we've been on lockdown. Most of the world had been on lockdown. There's some liberty going on right now, but I was attracted to a television program um, called the Great British um, Pottery Show. I might not have the title right, but anyway, it was a pottery show where people who deal with pottery and ceramics and that type of thing, they would come into this um, uh, pottery uh, contest and whoever, of course, as all contests goes, and then they go through 11, 12 weeks and eliminate so-and-so until they get down to the final two. And then those two go head to head and, you know, present uh, uh, as similar as possible to the judges what they were looking for. Now, 
I didn't know then why I was watching that show on a regular, consistent basis. I mean, I was drawn into it, but I learned some things about pottery while I was watching that show. And we might touch on a few of those things that I learned or that I heard, amen, uh, while we go through this series. So today we're going, the question is, last week we said, are you in a place to hear God? And I thank you guys for the feedback. Um, all of you who gave me feedback, you don't know how that encourages my heart. Amen. To keep going and keep studying. And so uh, I thank you that as I post this to Facebook, I'm asking you to hit the like button. Amen. And, and place a comment in the comment section. Um, if you would, I don't get paid for it. Facebook doesn't get paid for it. It's just a way for us to interact with each other. Amen. Um, concerning Monday manna. So last week we were talking about, are you in a place to hear God? That was a very interesting study. Amen. Where God told Jeremiah, go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause thee to hear my words, which tells us that there is a specific place where God would have us to be. Of course, he was talking to the prophet Jeremiah and you might say, well, I'm not a prophet and I don't have an office in the church. And, you know, all I do is sweep the floors. That doesn't mean that you can't hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Amen. Because the scripture clearly says in Revelations, let he that has an ear to hear, hear what the spirit is saying to the church church. Amen. If you are in the body of Christ, you're in the best position possible to hear what God said. So don't count yourself out. Just put yourself in a place to hear what did God say. Amen. I hope that encourages your heart. Um, so today we're going to be talking about, are you centered on the wheel? We're going to talk about one of the things I learned while watching the great pottery, uh, showdown. Amen. Um, in verse 3, he said, Then I went down to the potter's house. I followed the directions. I followed the instructions. Amen. If you know anything about me in Monday Manna, directions and instructions will take you through a successful life in Christ. Amen. Following directions, following instructions. It'll do a lot for your life. Amen. So in verse 3, Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. He wrought a work on the wheels. We're going to stay on that uh, scripture uh, for the next few minutes. He wrought a work on the wheels. So the question is, are you centered on the wheel? Why would I ask that question? Are you centered on the wheel? Well, one of the things I learned through watching this pottery show was that before the finished product the vision <laughs> before the end result could be manifest there had to be a centering on the wheel for the clay to be shaped into the vessel that the potter had in mind what i mean by that is the potter takes a lump of clay it's just, it has no shape, it has no form, and it has, uh, it has no, you, you know, you can't see anything intrinsically valuable in it. It's just a piece of clay. It's just a lump of dirt. Amen. And so he takes this piece of clay, this, um, uh, a certain amount of clay, and he slaps it or slams it onto the potter's wheel. And as he slams it onto the potter's wheel, that's not the part we're going to. This is the part we're going to. As he slams it on the potter's wheel, he begins to add water to the clay while at the same time applying pressure to the clay. So he's, he's applied it to the wheel. He's, he's adding, so while he's turning the disc where the, the wheel where the clay is, he's turning it, you know how the contraptions look, and it's turning, and while it's turning, he's adding water to soften it, amen. <laughs> he's adding water to soften the clay, and then he adds pressure to center the clay, I found that to be very interesting. Amen. 
that our God would take clay. I'm just using this as an example. That he, being the master potter, would take clay, add some water to it, amen, and begin to apply pressure. And what that pressure is meant to do is it is meant to center the clay on the wheel. I don't know about you, but this sounds real good to me. It is meant to center the clay on the wheel because unless the clay is centered on the wheel, the potter cannot make out of it the vessel that he has in mind. Unless the clay is centered on the wheel, the potter cannot move forward with forming the clay into the vessel that he would have in mind. Unless the clay is centered on the wheel, the clay will ultimately slide off the wheel because it's not centered. And he knows when it is centered this is the thing about the potter. He knows when that clay is centered because it no longer resists his touch. It no longer um, resists his touch. That's the best way to say it. He, it the clay is now submissive. The clay is now um, um, submitted to the potter's touch, submitted to the potter's hand, even submitted to the pressure that the potter is applying on the clay. Because the potter has something in mind for this clay. Amen. And so um, as we look at ourselves and we see ourselves in Jeremiah 18 verses 1 through 6, we have to ask ourselves these questions. We can ask ourselves these questions as the body of Christ. Number one, am I in the place to hear God? And number two, this week, um, are we centered on the wheel? That's the question that I leave you with, and that's the challenge that I leave you with, that you would ask yourself those questions. Better yet, that you would go to your prayer closet. I'm, I'm sitting in front of my closet. That you would go to your prayer closet, and you would ask our Heavenly Father, am I centered on your will? These are things in these last days that we need to ask ourselves. These are things in these last days that we need to challenge ourselves about. Am I walking by faith or am I walking by sight? Do I hear the voice of God or is my ear so full of everybody else's chatter? Amen. Am I centered on the will of God? Now you can pronounce that will, W-H-E-E-L or W-I-L-L. -L. In this matter, they're the same. Am I centered on the will of God? Because that's how you hear the voice of God and that's how you'll be able to say to answer that question, what did God say? Only by being centered on the will. Amen. And so Jeremiah said um, in verse 4, And the vessels that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, don't you know that we are spiritual Israel? We are born of the, uh, the body. We're born of the blood. Amen. We are born of the spirit. Amen. We are the example of the Old Testament Israel in the body of Christ today. Amen. He said, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hands, so are ye in mine, O house of Israel. So I ask you again, are you centered on the wheel? Are you centered on the will? Amen. I'm just going to ask you to ask yourself that question. I'm also going to ask you once again to, as I post this, that you would hit like. Amen. So I know who's watching. But that you would also comment. Amen. I get a lot of people that watch from afar. And what I mean by that is they watch the, the Monday Manna, but they don't hit like. <laughs> <laughs> or they don't hit share. And so they're watching from afar. I know there are there are people who are watching Monday Manna. Amen. Because I've heard it on more than one occasion. 
where I have been um, encouraged by someone saying, yeah, I watch Monday Manna all the time. Amen. And for that, I'm thankful. I appreciate that. You just don't know how much my heart is encouraged by that. Um, but I'm asking if we could um, communicate one with another. Amen. And that not only would you hit like, but you would also leave a great comment. Amen. Just to know, just for me to be encouraged. Amen. We are to encourage one another, exhort one another while it's called today. And that word exhort in Hebrews talks about um, pushing, amen, pushing others to stay centered in the will of God, pushing others to stay on the will. Amen. That's what that word exhort means. Literally, it means to, to provoke somebody to stay in the will of God, to stay in the body of Christ. Amen. And so that's what we are to do um, one for another as we grow into this measure and stature of Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. I, I know without a shadow of a doubt that something was said to encourage your heart, your hope, your faith, your trust, and your confidence in God and in God alone. Remember, ask yourself the question, take it to your prayer closet. Am I centered on the will? Until we meet again next week on Monday, man, and may God richly bless you and keep you safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. This is Evangelist Hutchinson at Open Door Ministries under the headship of Pastor Mark Hutchinson. May God richly bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.